But first, let's start with breaking news. We've been following, and this is what the blaze looked like just a short time ago at a chemical facility near Mount Ellet and Rupert that's on Detroit's east side. Considered a hazmat level three, and it has led to evacuations. Now, as you can see from some live Chopper 7 pictures we're going to bring you, firefighters have made great progress against this fire. Our Jeff Vaughn is live right now in that area, and Jeff, you broke in with this fire. You've been on top of it all day. What are you learning out there now? Well, we do have some late breaking information. I just uh, was talking with Detroit Fire. They said that the evacuation order as of 5 o'clock just a few moments ago has been lifted for that three block radius area surrounding this building. Chemical Technology Incorporated, which was on fire earlier today, as you mentioned, a level three hazmat situation, the highest level of hazardous material uh, related to a fire. Now, when we talk about what happened here at Chemical Technology Incorporated, they tell us it was a normal day. That was until around 2.30 today when the owner tells Detroit Fire Department that they were mixing a batch of mineral spirits, basically paint thinner, and somehow that ignited. And that sent this raging fire on Detroit's east side. And again, that three-block radius, uh, an evacuation order then ensued. Now, Kim Russell is here on the scene. Now, Kim, I know that you've been here from the very beginning. You just asked uh, uh, a member of uh, the fire department a few details. What was the latest that he was able to give you? The very latest information is that his, this has been downgraded to a level Level one hazmat situation at this point. They're actually letting some of the fire crews go. We can see them leaving the scene right now. He says that there were about 70 people who were evacuated from neighborhoods because of this fire. There were eight employees in the building when the fire started, and no one was hurt. So that's great news right now. Really good news. I know that you were one of the first reporters here on the scene. You actually spoke to some people that were pretty close to this. Uh, I guess I don't want to call it an explosion, but there was something that ignited, right? It happened around 2.30. I talked to a man who was walking near McNichols and Mount Elliott, and he says he heard the explosion. It was absolutely shocking. Actually, take a listen to what he had to say. Oh, it was awesome. It jumped me off of my feet. You know, I almost fell to the ground. But then I looked up, and I said, oh, my God. You know, and then... Smoke was everywhere, and I seen people running, you know, so I got out the way. Uh, back here live at the scene, I spoke with fire crews just a few minutes ago. They tell me that although they are kind of just wrapping up things here at this uh, fire that occurred at Chemical Technology Incorporated, they will be babysitting, for lack of a better word, throughout the night to make sure there are no sort of flare-ups or hot spots that uh, reignite. Uh, this uh, is a total loss, they tell me. That building there near Mount Elliott and Rupert, they say, is basically a total loss and that all the chemicals inside burned as a result of that fire. But as Kim Russell just said, it is still considered at this point Point in time a level one hazmat situation. Now we mentioned earlier about that uh, evacuation order was lifted at five o'clock, but earlier in the day, Jim Kirchner with Seven Action News was able to get inside. And Jim, I understand you talked talk to some people that were not only evacuated, but a school that was evacuated as well. Well, Jeff, we confirmed with Detroit Public Schools that one charter school was evacuated, but this has been a strong wind all afternoon. We're north of the fire scene, so take a look. You can see it's still blowing from the west to the east. This was thick black smoke. It was close to the ground. There's another big school in this area, not in part of the evacuation zone, but just outside in that thick smoke. They did not evacuate because they were given no information. It's what's called a level three hazmat. The most I heard that. dangerous I heard that. is a level four. What are your concerns out here being downwind? Well, I was wondering why they didn't alert the school so they can let the kids out a little earlier. It's 3.30 and dozens of students are being dismissed from the Winans Academy for Performing Arts, part of the Winans Perfecting Church. This is about a half mile away from the fire and directly downwind. When we were in vocal class, it was like fumes. We smelled and it. And then when you went farther down to where the middle schoolers was, you could really smell it more it stronger there. Bad. The assistant principal was outside helping the kids get out safely. He says the school was not given any evacuation order. From the city, so we need to we need to take a look and see what and f get some more information. Yeah, yeah, could be a dangerous situation. Yeah, so we need to get some more information quickly. Okay. We found Detroit police had blocked off streets where the thickest smoke was blowing. This is McNichols, a busy east-west yeah. drive where people who live nearby just plowed through. I just held my breath a little bit and put my head over my mouth and face. So 
I knew once I caught on the other side of the wind, I'd be safe till I got home for the most part. I got, I got to get home. My house right there. Now, I am on Mount Elliott, and take a look. There are a lot of industrial-type businesses up and down this corridor. Another one over here, and then looking again south down at the fire. People out here who are milling about told me this is life on the east side of Detroit. Jeff? Okay, Jim, thank you very much. Jim is just to the north of us here. Now, take a look behind me as the Detroit fire crews still continue to battle this once level three hazmat situation that sparked up at about 2.30 this afternoon on Detroit's east side. I can uh, confirm now that the Environmental Protection Agency is now on the scene. EPA workers passed us by just a few moments ago. I would presume that they are going to test the air quality uh, after this fire. So, obviously, the wind's a concern as well. Meteorology so Dave Rexroth has been tracking that. Now, Dave, what can you tell us about as far as maybe the air quality might be away from here? Which way did the wind go from this fire? Well, the wind has been consistent. I guess if that's a good thing there, it's only been one direction that's been a real problem. It's been blowing from uh, the southwest to the northeast. Jim is talking about that a little bit as well, showing you the video of the plume there. Here's what it looks like on radar. We took the radar and put it on a very sensitive mode, and you'll see the plume start up here on Detroit's east side, then blow off to the northeast. We'll stop it and kind of back it up, and you you can see the thickest time now again from here around 2.30 or so uh, through 3.30 to 4 o'clock. And then uh, it's uh, certainly lessened uh, quite a bit now, the plume there and the issues. The wind generally again from the southwest to the northeast, pretty good gust there. And that, when it's blown that strong, it allows it to stay closer to the ground than if you had light winds and it would get up and get away. So it looks like things getting better there, Jeff, but the wind certainly has played a role here in terms of expanding the problems off to the northeast of the fire. Okay, Dave, thank you very much. Just to reiterate a few high points from this story, we have just learned that uh, the uh, evacuation order was lifted as of 5 o'clock tonight. There were no injuries at this one-time level 3 hazmat situation. Uh, people are allowed back in. The EPA is here. I can't confirm that. We saw a cruise just a few moments ago. They're testing the air quality. We certainly hope to have more for you uh, here on 7 Action News and later reports. Back to you in the studio.